I'm Haley, and if I'm being honest, I'm not a very good cook. But with the help from local chefs, I'll get better in the kitchen one meal at a time. Oh, hey, welcome back to In the Kitchen here at DeRocher's. You are just in time because I'm going to be putting together a delicious dinner party meal with Chef Ella, who we met before. And let me tell you, this chicken piccata, oh my goodness, you are going to want to stick around and learn how to make this. Plus, it's super easy. And we're going to learn some of her favorite family traditions. So here is Chef Ella. Well, Chef Ella, thank you so much for coming back to the show and helping me with this dinner party I'm about to host. You're gonna, I'm telling you, you're gonna blow them away. Oh my God. You can't go wrong with this. I can't go wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard that before. You help, you help me <laughs> do better in the kitchen. When it comes to, you know, the holidays or even just family celebrations, there's always those fun traditions you do with those special dinner parties you may have. What are some of your favorite family traditions? Well, you're gonna think I'm a weirdo, but um, my favorite thing to do during the holidays is something that my father would do when he was alive, and that is kielbasa and eggs for breakfast or for the midday when you wake up. So when Christmas would come, we would open the gift, and then the gifts would be open, and then, you know the kids would go crazy. But really what it is is the breakfast at Christmas. And you've always got to have a good kielbasa, like Stanley's kielbasa, or I make my own kielbasa. Um, but you have an egg with your kielbasa, and it's amazing. It'll change your world. And um, throughout the day, then, you can just, you know, eat as you go, so you're not overeating. Don't forget to eat your eggs and kielbasa for breakfast and Christmas. <laughs> That's my favorite all-time tradition. And then I think the other one would be, um, the Italian side of me would be the seven fishes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that would be a dinner uh, where you're honoring the seven fishes in a meal. And it's amazing. Have you ever had the seven fishes? No, this is totally new information. Please. So the seven <laughs> fishes is, is a meal that has uh, seven seafoods in it. Um, wow. And it's traditionally done at Christmas time. Um, and so that's another meal that is um, to my culture. Uh, and unfortunately, my grandma Ella passed before I was born. Uh, but my grandma Dudek had instilled the Polish part of me. So I'm totally Polish driven. But you see today, I can cook some Italian too, because I got the manja. <laughs> well, I, I do love a good Italian dish, so, but you know, I have, I have a little Polish favoritism as well. Yes. I hear that. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I will say is on the road, when you're traveling on the road with a group of people who have been on the road from city to city, they don't know what day it is or what time it is. But when they come into you and they know that they're going to have a good meal and it's going to be comfort food and you can do something special during the holidays for them, like put up a tree or decorate the line, how, you know, you would decorate with the de decorations and make it feel at home. They appreciate those things more than you could ever imagine. And when somebody can come into your kitchen, like the little girl that sings for Pentatonix came into my kitchen in November one time I was in the basement of the state theater. And she said, chef, this, this smells like my grandma's house at Thanksgiving. And I was like, wow, that is a huge compliment that if you can reproduce a meal that makes somebody remember home that has been away from home and on the road for so long, those are things that matter. Yeah, those filled my soul just by having somebody come to my kitchen and saying that. I love that. It's so beautiful that you're able to recreate that for those folks on the road, because even though we enjoy their entertainment, um, yeah. I think we forget that they're humans too, and they, they miss their family, and they miss right. their home, and that's wonderful that you're able to bring that to them. You know, unless you said a tonic. Oh my goodness, they are so great. They're, they're amazing. Well, yeah. today you're going to help me put together a delicious meal for yes, sure. my guest list, my holiday guest list. And, um, and from what you've told me, it's a, it's a little kind of easy to make, so I'm gonna have a little more time to chit chat with my girlfriends. So, oh, what are you making today? We're making Daryl Hall chicken piccata. Oh. Yes. So it's been named after Mr. Hall. He gave me permission to name it after him nine years ago when I cooked it for him at the Toledo Zoo. Um, he took it as his fourth meal on his jet and he called me the next day when I was on my way to cook for a great, the Grateful Dead in Chicago. And he said it was the best chicken piccata he'd ever had in his life. And then I asked him if I could name it after him and he said, yeah. So then I just got to pick it for him in Vancouver again. So I was happy about that. So fun. Vancouver is such a beautiful city. Beautiful city. And those Canadian people are lovely. Just lovely people. Yeah. There's nothing going on over there. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my goodness, I love it. Well, what all um, goes into the meal? I know we have a chicken piccata. Yep. So, uh, so what, makes, what makes it Daryl Hall's? I know that he loved it, but like what's in it that's special beyond other piccatas? Um, I think it's the love. Uh, and you, if you take your time with this meal, it doesn't take a whole lot of time, but you can put an amazing amount of love into this meal just in your prep and cooking it. And you can have people in the kitchen while you're cooking it and you can teach them how to do it super easy. I love it. Well, Chef Ella, I'm excited to try this out and um, impress my guest list. When we come back, we're going to join Chef Ella in the kitchen here at DeRocher's and learn how to make this delicious chicken piccata. But first, we're going to get in the mix. Well, Michael, thank you so much for having us here at Axis, which is a new restaurant in town with the new hotel. So tell me a little bit about this location. I know there's some call to your relationship with the University of Toledo. Absolutely. Uh, so the University of Toledo, we're on campus of the Medical Center and the ownership really wanted to play on that relationship with, you know, the science, the rockets itself. And so that's why the name came out, Axis. Axis holds everybody together. It's what everyone circulates around and we want to be that hub for UT. So when people come here, what can they expect culinary wise? Well, you know, I, I, it's, it's a really unique opportunity for us to showcase Toledo, some of the local surroundings, put a little bit of my Southern flair into it and just have some fun. I can appreciate that. So not only are you building that relationship with UT through Axis, but also you're building those relationships with local produce. So tell me a little bit about this dish we have in front of us. It smells delightful. Oh, absolutely. This is my favorite dish. This is uh, our blackened scallops. They're all from North Atlantic, come from Boston. Uh, so we paired it with just some nice Ohio sweet corn that we've charred, some Brussels sprouts for a little crunch and cabbage flavor, and then sweet tomatoes and a little bit of balsamic glaze. Mm. Finished out with a little Creole spice and then some bourbon and white wine. Ooh, I do, I do like all of those things. There you go. <laughs> all in one dish. And it's from Boston. Boston. Right, where they get the coffee. Yes. I probably did that wrong, but. <laughs> Close enough, right? <laughs> I'm not from, I'm from the Midwest, I'm <laughs> corn fed, what they say. <laughs> exactly. So how did you get into culinary arts? Uh, you know, I got hurt playing football and I always grew up with my grandmother cooking in the kitchen from small age, making chocolate chip cookies or glumpkies and pierogies. So it really kind of just was something that was always in the background. I wanted to pursue it more. So I started off at Opera Lane Hotel and it was a unique opportunity to learn every part of that. So not only does the food have to be stellar, but you also have to have a great service and have a great atmosphere, which in my opinion, a good drink makes the world go round. Oh yeah, uh, and that's a big part of it. You know, the service complements the food, the food complements the service, so they go hand in hand. So a couple of our cocktails that we did today, uh, we did the honey jasmine julep. Uh, Ooh, and it has like flowers. I like the vibrant colors. It almost looks tropical. Absolutely, it does has that little, you know, that prettiness to it, uh, it but it also has that sweetness of the honey and then the jasmine that blends well, really well with the bourbon. Mm. So it's really unique hotel. So it's got a little bit of Kentucky influence, but then you just put the sweetness of the honey in. It's really, really, really nice. Now this one, we have an orange slice. You know, this looks like it would help my cold. It, it, it could definitely do that. It you know, it's got- It could help a cold, it could help a virus uh, or something, right? So this is our orange cobbler, uh, spiced orange cobbler crisp. So it's a play on fall and winter, uh, blood orange flavors, a little bit of sherry, uh, and it really just kind of gives you that warmth uh, and you know, it will, cuddle you when the, the snow starts to come out. Mm, and, and our bartender even like sprinkled a little dusting over it. The little right? dusting of powdered sugar just oh. to show you that that's gonna warm you up and take the snow away. Ooh, I can't wait. Well, I would like to share a cheers to that. Absolutely, cheers. cheers. Ooh, I'm excited. Thanks for coming out. Mm. Oh, yeah, that tastes like a, tastes like a dessert. It's, Absolutely. It's delicious, oh my goodness. Well. Chef, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, Haley. Thank you. In the Kitchen on Beacon is presented by DeRocher's, your appliance experts. Welcome back to In the Kitchen here at DeRocher's. I got my hair tied back. I am gloved up because Chef Ella, you're gonna help me make a delicious meal for my friends who are coming over. So what are we making today? We're making Daryl Hall chicken piccata. It is named after Daryl Hall from Hall and Oats because he loved this meal when I cooked it for him when we were at the zoo in Toledo. Oh, wow, okay. 
I love it. So we have a little nod to one of the people you filled their bellies with. Yeah. And then um, it sounds delicious. And we have wine. So yes, I already know I'm going to love it. Okay. <laughs> so exactly. So that's a great point. You could do this uh, this recipe different ways. You could either use wine or you could use chicken stock. If you're not drinking and you're afraid you're, you're having friends over, maybe somebody doesn't drink and, and vibe. So you would use chicken stock instead of the wine. But we're going to use wine today because... Wine is fine. No. <laughs> I, I got you. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to have you slice these lemons in half for me, and you're going to juice the lemons. Okay. And what I'm going to do is we're going to, while you're doing that, uh, we're going to show them how to pound out some chicken after you get the lemon sliced. Okay. We're going to pound that out. We're going to melt some butter. I got two tablespoons of butter in the in the saucepan or the pan already. We're going to throw some oil in there, and then we're going to dredge the chicken, and I'm going to show you how to make the sauce. I love it. How about that? Right. Perfect. So let me turn this guy up here. Let's then we're just halving these, right? Yep, you're just going to put them in here. Okay. So half is this way. Oh, that's right how we're... Way. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so I'll cut them. You juice them. How about that? <laughs> we'll do that. All right? So you're going to juice them right over the bowl. Okay. And we're going to do... For this... It, there you go, sister. Squeeze away. For this, you're going to do about... Eh, we got a lot of chicken, so we're going to do four of these guys, okay? And then we can use some for garnish. How you doing? Yeah. Look at all that juice. There you go. All right, so now I'm going to put the oil in over here. We got a little brown butter going on. So my, my gig with the oil is this. Oil changes viscosity when you add heat to it. So you just want to start off little oil at a time. So if you put a quarter of an oil in, it's going to go to a half a dollar, right? So we're going to get this... Mixed together. We're going to turn this guy all the way down. Hey, how are we doing there? Awesome. I'm just making sure I get all the juice out, Chef. Okay. Well, you know, lemons cost some money these days, so. Right, you know? Exactly. These aren't, these aren't your, you know, grandma 30 cent no, lemons sure. anymore. They're no. like 99 cents a lemon. Yeah. Got to get all so the juice out. The lemon combined with the heavy cream and the wine and the capers. You like capers? I don't think I've ever had capers. Really? You're going to introduce me to something new oh, today. Oh, yeah. So these little dudes, these are great little nuggets of goodness. And these little guys, uh, you can find these in the aisle where your pickles are. Oh. Okay. The thing you want to do with these, though, is you want to drain them. You don't want to put the juice uh, from your capers in your sauce. It'll be way too salty. No good. Yeah, it'll be way overboard. All right. So we got two left of that. Then we're going to set this up. And we're going to pound a little chicken. Yeah. How you probably doing? worked my forearms a little bit more in the gym, huh? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. This is your workout for the day right here. The... I'm earning my chicken. I'm earning my You're wine. You're earning your wine and the chicken. <laughs> All right. So now we got that done. All right. All right. So here's two ways you can do this. Now, usually there's a mallet in a kitchen. You're going to pound meat. You're going to tenderize it. But if you don't have a mallet, this I is what you... I have a mallet. I was going to say that you have a mallet. So we're gonna take some saran wrap, just like this. I just have good old aggression and some fists. That's okay. It. So you actually pound it with your with your fist. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna take this guy just like this. We're gonna cover him up. Because we don't want no chicken stuff flying all over the kitchen, right? Now you can do this two ways. You can also put it in a ziploc, right? Okay. You just squeeze the air out of it so you don't pop that guy, right? So if you don't have a mallet, what's the thing that you could hit somebody over the head with? In the kitchen. I do have that. There you go, sister. <laughs> so you see how that's already breaking down? There we go. How about that? Well, there. That's a little better than my fist. So now, this portion here, it would be like, hey, that's a that's a really big chicken breast, Ella. That's literally probably a little, maybe nine ounces now that we smashed it out. This is good for a family of four. Wow. <laughs> no, just kidding. All right. So... And here we have our flour with our seasonings. I got some Italian seasoning in here. Mm -hmm. I got some uh, sea salt and some pepper and some garlic. Okay? Okay. So now that you're gloved up, you're going to dredge that chicken right in there for me. We're going to put them right in this pan. Okay? All right. So just coat her? Just coat her up. Yep. And I'm throwing it in. And you're throwing it right okay. in the bowl. Sure. Yep. Put it right in there. We turn this guy back on. There you go. Yeah, that's what I would do at home. You're going to get them all coated. We're learning that I can't uh, even cut lemon. <laughs> <laughs> that 
have Girl, a hard time with that knife. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Maybe I'm just intimidated with all your star it, power. It could be. It could be that. Okay, so now we're going to put it right in the pan. There we go. So it's while we coating. pound, yeah, we're going to do another one. Those might be thin enough that we could. We don't even need to pound. Oh, yeah, those are real thin. So those are fine. So let me turn this guy up. And when you cut these, they were like full breasts, and you cut yes. them in, in half, right? So what or I like... did was I butterflied it. Butterflied it, okay. Okay, and then I... That's when I put it down here and we pounded it. It was already butterflied out. So that was one breast. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Yep. I've so, been doing that wrong. <laughs> what have you been doing? I just kicked out of the package and threw it in the oven. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so here's the thing about chicken. You'll notice that chicken, when, when you cook chicken breast, it dries out, right? Yes. <laughs> That's the, the one thing that people say the most is like chicken breast is terrible, has no bone, it has no flavor, it's... It dries out too easy. Mm -hmm. But if you butterfly this out and you do your timing in the oven properly, it will never dry out. Like this chicken right here, you're gonna say, why is this so moist? And I'll be like, well, it's the sauce, but it's also the way that we pounded it and we cooked it. So you could be doing it wrong. I think I'm doing it wrong. But I'm okay. learning today how to do it right. Yes, you are. So my main thing about this here is, do not be a flip-flopper. You know what a flip-flopper is? Someone who keeps flipping and flopping? Flipping and flopping, okay. yes. They flip it, and then they flop it, and then they flip it, and they flop it again. But the problem is, you're taking away, every time you do something like that, you're literally moving around the dredge, right? Mm. So you're going to start taking pieces off. You're gonna, It's not going to cook properly. So literally, you want to go three and a half to four minutes per side on this chicken. You want it to be golden brown before we are flipping it. Okay. So then we don't flop ever again. So then we cook it on the other side, we pull it and put it aside, and then we continue our recipe. Oh, okay? Okay. So don't be a flip-flopper because he's going back in the pan. Okay. Okay, with the sauce. And that would help keep it from being too dried out. Yes, right? okay. yes. Okay, I'm learning, I'm learning guys. So we're not gonna overcook the chicken, is the, the essentially what we're learning today, is That's don't overcook your today. chicken. Yes. Okay. Do not overcook your breath. Okay, <laughs> so now, See how golden brown that is? Ooh, oh, that looks yeah. amazing. So now we flip them. We're going to cook them on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Then we're going to drop another chicken in here, and we're going to do the same thing. Then we're going to make the sauce. I'll show you how to make the sauce. In the Kitchen on Beacon is presented by DeRochers, your appliance experts. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a thick piece like this, Right here. Okay. That's where you want to whack him. Because the rest of him is cooking. He's done. But we got, see how loose this guy is? Mm. Yeah. So we're going to let him go for just a second longer. We'll put him aside. He's the side side guy. Okay. And that was the exception to the rule. We did yes. flip flop that one. Yes, we did flip flop him. Because here's the thing. He's fat around that one end. Well. Right. All right. Beat down. So now we're going to turn this sheet off on this pan. Okay. We're going to turn that off. And now you're gonna put your, uh, let's see, put your oil or your juice in here. We'll put a little of this in there. You want to step oh, over? Sure. All right. Do you want me to have my so, hand over to catch? The yeah. So usually what I would do is, if I'm at home, I rim, I rim the pan, okay? But you don't have to because we pulled the chicken out. So go ahead and put a little of that juice in there for me. And there you go. All right, that's good. All right. Okay. So now we got the juice going on. Now you'll notice that I did take the pan off the heat, right? Yes. Okay. So now we're just going to move this around. All right. That Although looks truthfully, good. with our DeRoche's induction stove top, I, I get a little confused of where the heat is. Well, you know what's is, crazy but... is the whole top is the heat. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter where you put the pan, it's going to register it as the, where the heat oh. is. So you see how that's thickened up a little? Mm -hmm. See how that sheen has come up from the butter? All right, so now we're just going to add a little, well, maybe a little more of this. So this is what I mean about going around the pan. I just go around the outside of the pan twice times around. Boom. All right, now we're going to let that go for a minute. Smell it now, sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we add in a little of our cream. Now, you don't have to use cream if you don't want to. If you don't want to, leave it off. Some people have an allergy to dairy. 
whatever it may be, okay? So now we're gonna add the heat back on this guy, just a little. Uh-huh. You don't want it to go crazy, but you want it to come up in heat and bubble, okay? Then we'll put the capers in, we'll taste it, and we'll see if we got the sauce. Ooh, I'm excited. Okay? Yes, I am excited. I'm using my fish spatula here to stir this guy. So, uh, that's how easy chicken piccata is. It's a sauce spatula too. Yeah, it is a sauce spatula, isn't it? So, now usually we put this in a skillet. This is not a skillet that I would use, but skillet, this is a high wall pan. I like using a skillet because you control the heat better. Okay. I kind of dip it in and... Okay. Cool. Oh. Ooh. Taste the lemon. Mm hmm Taste the wine. Yeah. And the cream. <laughs> and it's very good. Uh-huh. So Give it some of that, like, brown butter in there, too. Mm-hmm. Very, very good. The nuttiness. Mm. Mm-hmm. So this is going to come up a little more. Bring it up a little more. So you want to get a little bubble going. You don't want to roll the bubble, but you just want to get a little bubble going. We're going to hit a little more white wine in here. Just because. I'm not mad about that. Just because it's Wednesday. No, it's Thursday. We'll hit it again. It's Thirsty Thursday. It's Thirsty Thursday. There we go. <laughs> so we'll hit a little more of that in there. And then maybe just a little more of this guy here. Just like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now she's bubbling a little in the middle there. There we go. So all those little bits, those little brown bits from the chicken and the breading, it's all cooking in there. So at one point, at some point right now, see how it's coming up on the pan? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna let that go for a minute. We'll throw in the capers. We'll return the chicken back to the pan. Okay. okay. There it goes. Beautiful. All right. So you want to do about two tablespoons of capers, just like that. We'll throw a little parsley, because you can't have Italian cooking without parsley. Oh, well, yeah, this is true. All right. I don't know. You just told me that, but. <laughs> nah, I, you don't know if that's true, but it is. All right. So now I'm going to return the big guy back to the pan, just like that. Okay. And we're going to let him sit in there and just absorb that sauce and just loving it up. Mm. So just bask in the now the sauce. sauce will thicken up uh, once it's done cooking we'll add a little pat of butter to it for the sheen and it's gorgeous then we'll finish off the plate with uh, parsley and lemon as a garnish and you're in light blend I love it well this was simple I'm excited to finish this up when we come back we're going to taste this and tell you how it is here in the kitchen at the Roasters in the Kitchen on Beacon is presented by DeRochers, your appliance experts. Welcome back to In the Kitchen here at DeRochers. We have our meal all set and Chef Ella, you made it look beautiful. We also have Matt here helping us taste because like I said, we have a dinner party happening. So we have our meals, we're ready to taste and should we dig in? Absolutely, awesome. Let's take it away. Now, let's see if the chicken is moist. I love the presentation of the green and then the capers and, oh, the chicken is nice and brown. Mm. Oh, well, that is delicious. Mm. There you go. And it is, it, it really did hold that moisture, as you were saying, mm -hmm. which kind of helped with the way Absolutely. you seared it in the pan. And the lemon and the wine oh. together with that heavy cream. I, I truly love the, the citrus taste of the lemon and then you have the acidity of the Pinot Grigio. It just beautiful compliments to, to the chicken. And this is a dish that you can make for many people. You can make it for your own, you know, your spouse. Look at Rhonda would love this. Yes. <laughs> she would love this if you made this for her. And she doesn't like a lot of heavy sauces mm -hmm. and cream sauces, but yeah. you don't even really notice the cream. You get a little taste of it, but it's yep. not real heavy. No, just a little dollop in there and you're good to go. It tightens up the, the sauce to begin with. It's, it's delicious. And to Matt's point, I do like how light it is. So it kind of, I'm also a little funny about sauces. So, so <laughs> well done, Jeff. Well Thank done. you very much. Thank you. I know my guests will love this and I'll, um, I might 
even be able to impress myself with this dish because of your expert teaching. This is a rock star dish. <laughs> this is a rock star dish. It, it will is. make Sarah smile. <laughs> yes. Big one. He got one there in. There we go. There we he go. He got one in. <laughs> he got one in. <laughs> well, you could be a man eater. <laughs> or a chicken eater. Or a chicken. <laughs> You better stop us. You got one? <laughs> you got one for us, Haley? Come on. No, I don't. She don't even know. She don't got a song. Uh, all right. I didn't do my research like you did I, before. I, I never looked at the list, Haley. You no, know, you've got a wild list. Top your head. Off the top. <laughs> well, Seth, Ella, where can we find you? Well, you can actually find me at DeRocher's. I do uh, private. Well, not, it's not a private class. You go over to Eats with Ella. I announce what we're cooking. The class usually says, hey. Let's do this at DeRocher's. So I do in-person classes once a month at DeRocher's. Um, I just got back from uh, being on the road with uh, Mr. Hall uh, over in Vancouver. So I do a little private chefing uh, and I do, you know, some private parties. So if you know how to find me, you can find me if you know how to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Seth Ella, it's been a pleasure and we really appreciate you sharing your crafts with us here on In the Kitchen. We'll definitely have to have you back. Thanks for having me. I love cooking with you. It's awesome. We'll see you on the next In the Kitchen here at DeRocher's. In the Kitchen on Beacon is presented by DeRocher's, your appliance experts.